Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! Today I'm making some desert terrain, so let's just jump right into it. So to start off my build, I'm going to be making a large board out of 2 inch thick blue polystyrene. This is my standard process for making a gaming board and I'm going to be using a lot of the same steps as I did in my ice terrain video. Link to that in the top right hand corner if you missed that one. This way I can keep all my terrain looking consistent. I'm going to trace out one of my previous boards for sizing, and then I'm going to use a sharp knife to cut it out. A great way to do this is to cut about halfway through the foam, and then use your hands and break it over your knee. That gives it a really nice, natural, rough texture, and you won't have to do as much work with your knife afterwards. Once I have a big chunk that I'm satisfied with, I'm going to carve up the edge to make it look nice and rocky. So here's where I started deviating from my regular process a little bit. Uh, I wanted to make two test pieces to make sure that I don't ruin the board uh, that I just worked so hard to get cut to size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve a regular grid into the first piece and then the second piece I'm going to carve a grid but also smash it with a dumbbell to make it cracked. And then I'm going to take out my heat gun and toast it on like a medium temperature from a distance and it, hopefully this will accentuate some of the cracks in uh, the, the piece so that I can kind of preserve some of that texture because I know later on I'm going to be covering this in a step that's probably going to water down a little bit of those those details. So I want to make sure that they're really exaggerated so that they can still be seen at the end. Perfect. So that worked exactly as I wanted it to. And that number two is amazing. And that's exactly what I'm going to use on the whole board. So now that I know I'm not going to destroy my board, you can stare at the top of my head while I start drawing a one inch grid all over this whole thing. Once the grid's good, it's time to let out all your pent up rage and really give the downstairs neighbors a pummeling. Or really give it to your downstairs neighbors. <laughs> you just pummel them. You just you just go downstairs and you just fuck up your neighbors. Once the grid is good, it's time to let out all your pent up rage and just really give it to your downstairs neighbors by pummeling this board with a dumbbell. Once I'm satisfied with the look of the cracks, just hit it a couple more times for good measure and then bring it back to the table and whip out a fresh X-Acto blade to start carving in the grid. Before I bust out the heat gun, I'm going to take some scrap chunks of foam and start carving them into dune shapes on my Proxon. Using the hot wire for this makes the wavy lines way better and faster than trying to use a knife, so that's why I'm using it like this. What I will use a knife for is making some chunky desert rock scatter terrain. I'm just going to use the same techniques that I used on the side of my board, but on smaller pieces. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to bust the heat gun back out and hit all of my pieces. Carefully trying to not melt my fingertips off, but sometimes you have to sacrifice for your art. You'll know when you've done enough because the foam will start to get a uh, sort of a hard shell on it and it'll go from looking very matte to having more of like a slight glossy shell to it. Now we're done prepping so it's time to paint. And for my base coat I'm going to mix up a whole bottle of burnt umber with more or less equal parts Mod Podge and then I'm use it to completely cover all of my pieces. This is going to act as a really nice dark undertone. So this is where it gets interesting because I'm going to use a technique that I haven't used before or at least haven't used before to try and make sand. So it is equal parts white glue, paint, and baking soda. And I'm just going to mix that up in a, uh, in a cup and then slap that on top of my board. So I've used it before to try and make snow, but never used it before to try and make sand. So I'm hoping that it'll give me a good result because I find that using sand to represent sand on 28 millimeter scale never really works out and it ends up looking more like gravel than it does like sand. So I'm hoping that the baking soda will be more granular, but I am risking it filling in all my nooks and crannies that I work so hard to smash into the board and have it just look 
like flowing sand, but that's a risk I'm willing to take, so let's see how this works out. This stuff is thick. It is the consistency of like a Wendy's Frosty once it's all mixed up. And I'm just gonna slap it on my board and start spreading it around. I'm gonna try and keep consistent brush stroke directions so that it looks like it's kind of getting blown around by the wind and not, it's not gonna look so chaotic and ridiculous. I'm also gonna do the same thing to all my scatter pieces. So once that's all dry, I'm gonna use my homemade black wash and I'm just kind of splashing it randomly all over the board. I'm not going for 100% coverage, I'm just picking out areas that I want to be darker because I find on this big flat surface it's nice to give it some kind of variation in tone. As for the scatter pieces, I'm just gonna take out a brush and completely soak them in it because it's not as uh, important to be sporadic because it's not large spaces I'm covering. After leaving that overnight to dry, I'm going to come at these pieces with a series of dry brushes. I'm starting with a golden brown mixed with a little vanilla, and as I move up I'm going to get progressively brighter by adding more vanilla. So I'll hit the whole thing with a dry brush of mostly golden brown, and then move on and hit kind of like the higher areas with a lighter and lighter dry brush until I get just to hitting the tops of these pieces with a mostly vanilla dry brush. This is where the baking soda step really comes through. The dry brushing does a fantastic job of bringing out the sandy texture and really, really making this give that desert vibe that I'm looking for. Once that's all set, I'm just going to coat it with a matte varnish off camera and it's ready for the table. And that's it friends! Get out there and make yourself some desert terrain! This project's super quick to take on. You could take it on in probably a weekend, that's what I did. So you got no reason not to. Subscribe if you want to see some more content like this. I have plenty of other videos if you're looking to level up your terrain or painting game. Let me know what you think down there in the comments below, and go ahead and smash that like button with a dumbbell. It's a great workout. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great week. Smash that like button with a dumbbell, and give it to your neighbors. <laughs> Uh. So weirdly suggestive. <laughs> it does, doesn't it?